Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So here we will talk about the portal hypertension. The pictures here are for the causes of the portal hypertension that we will talk about later in this video. So here we will talk about an overview, pathophysiology, causes, clinical features, diagnosis and treatment for the portal hypertension. So the portal hypertension is increased pressure within the portal venous system in the abdomen. The pressure difference of 6 mm mercury or more between the portal vein and the inferior vena cava confirms the portal hypertension diagnosis. Liver cirrhosis is the most common cause for portal hypertension. Now regarding the pathophysiology of the portal hypertension. So this is here the portal vein. It collects the blood from the bowel in here and take it into the liver. The liver would remove the toxins from the, uh, from the blood taken into it and then would pump the blood into the hepatic vein here and into then the uh, vena, the inferior vena cava. So the portal vein collects the blood from the bowel as we mentioned, then it goes through the liver and into the hepatic vein and then to the inferior vena cava. The portal hypertension develops when the resistance to the portal blood flow increases leading to increase the pressure difference between the portal and the inferior vena cava. The resistance could be in the liver in the form of cirrhosis or it could be prehepatic in the portal vein in form of the portal vein thrombosis or it could be posthepatic like what Chiari syndrome occlusion of the hepatic vein. So the portal hypertension develops because there is some resistance to the blood flowing from the portal vein and into the hepatic vein. For example, the liver cirrhosis, it would block the blood and this would lead to hypertension to move the blood through the liver and into the hepatic vein. Or maybe the cause is a prehepatic in the portal vein like thrombosis of the portal vein. This would also lead to increase the pressure in order to move the blood through the portal vein here. And it could be post-hepatic, like a thrombosis of the hepatic vein here. If this vein is thrombosed, this would also increase the portal venous pressure and it would lead to portal hypertension. So when the portal blood pressure remains elevated, the body tries to decrease this pressure by opening the collateral vessels that bypass the liver's normal circulation, thus bypassing the resistance. So if let's say we have resistance here that is high, resistance to the uh, blood. Resistance here is high, the body tries to bypass this uh, space by trying to opening collateral vessels that go through uh, around this uh, space. Examples of those collaterals are the esophageal varices, the gastric varices, meaning through the esophagus and through the stomach, through the rectum, birectal varices, periambulacral veins, also called the cabbage medosa, the splenic collaterals, and the retroperitoneal collaterals. Causes for the portal hypertension include prehepatic, intrahepatic, and posthepatic. Prehepatic, like portal vein thrombosis, arteriovenous malformations, or fistulas involving the portal vein, meaning everything that is prehepatic, everything that is before the liver. Uh, for example, the portal vein problems. In the intrahepatic is the liver problems, like the congenital hepatic fibrosis, the schistosomiasis, and the liver cirrhosis, and the venous vena occlusive disease. In the posthepatic, the problem is in the, in the hepatic vein or the inferior vena cava, for example, the Bud Chiari syndrome, thrombosis of the hepatic vein, or the inferior vena cava obstruction, or the constrictive pericarditis. Clinical features of the portal hypertension include uh, no symptoms until complication arise. The liver cirrhosis is the most common cause of the portal hypertension, and when patients have it, they present with jaundice palmar erythema, spider nevi, gynecomastia, ascites, astraxis, 
and hepatic encephalopathy. The patient might present with hematemesis or melina from bleeding viruses. This is significant to know because those uh, should be managed very quickly because they might lead to the patient going into shock. Sibilinomegaly is a reliable sign in the diagnosis of portal hypertension. If not sibilinomegaly, then think of the other differential diagnosis. Now for the diagnosis, you would need some lab investigations like the CBC to look for anemia from bleeding or thrombocytopenia from bleeding or liver failure. The LFTs and RFTs, liver function tests and renal function tests to look for liver or renal failure, the coagulation profile to look for deficiencies in the coagulation factors from liver failure, Doppler ultrasound for the portal vein looking for stenosis or thrombosis, abdominal ultrasound to look for liver cirrhosis, ascites and sibilinomegaly, and endoscopy looking for varices. Patient with ascites need paracentesis to look for the cause. Measurement of the portal pressure often not required to make the diagnosis because the clinical features are enough. Regarding the treatment, treat the cause. Portal vein thrombosis is treated with anticoagulation. Liver cirrhosis is treated with liver transplantation. Treat the complications. Hematemesis is treated with supportive measures like blood transfusions and endoscopic therapy and empiric antibiotic for prophylaxis against uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and ascites treated with sodium restriction, diuretics and paracentesis. And with that we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support more you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.